It's part and parcel of life as a legislator. The other three days of the week when a state representative or a state senator aren't in Montpelier, hearing testimony in committee rooms or voting on proposed legislation, they meet with the constituents to hear what's on their minds. Those meetings might occur at the supermarket or the hardware store or anywhere around town. But often legislators will host informal meetings at various spots around their districts to chat over coffee about what's going on at the state house and to hear about what's going on back home in the district. Linda Joy Sullivan, who was elected to a first term last November to the district that includes the towns of Dorset, Danby, Peru, Mount Tabor, and Landgrove, meets up with residents from one town or another several times during the month. Last Sunday, she met with some constituents at the Wilson House in East Dorset to update them on what's been going on in Montpelier and to hear about what's been happening back on the home front in the meanwhile. Sullivan began the meeting with a discussion about a bill that is currently before the House Commerce Committee, of which she is a member. The bill would provide additional workers' compensation medical coverage for first responders, such as police, fire, or rescue squad personnel, who may be suffering from post-traumatic stress disorder. One of the tricky aspects of the proposed legislation is ensuring that the PTSD symptoms were actually acquired in the line of their service as first responders and not because of another cause. Constituents were interested to learn about the possible dollar costs of the bill, among other things. Jim Salzgiver, one of the constituents attending the hour-long get-together this Sunday morning, had a particular interest in the bill. As the treasurer of the Manchester Rescue Squad, he used to worry about the long-term financial consequences of changes like this, as well as how it would be determined that the PTSD conditions were actually the result of service in the rescue squad, or even the rescue squad they currently work for, instead of at a previous organization where they might have been first responders. Our employees and all that, we've got a little bit of concern on on this, that that, uh, that one of the real changes is that in the past, you know, and this was probably pretty onerous on employees, in the past, they had to prove that the PTSD was related to the job. And now it puts the burden of proof on us, the employer, to prove that it wasn't because of the job. So it, you know, it's been with us, and we want to make sure they're taken care of. The state's joint fiscal office, the legislature's number crunchers, have estimated that expanding the cost of the state workers' compensation coverage to include mental services and PTSD coverage would cost about $126,000, but would not impact the state budget until 2019. The bill will be coming up for a vote in the near future in the House. Remember, you could always go on to the site, look up my committee, and you'll see it there, or just email me and I'll email you any of the bills. But just so everybody knows, when I get bills like this, I will immediately shoot them over like to the person I know in who's our constituent who touches it like Jim. <laughs> I was like, here comes the next one that's coming out or was out for a while was 170, which was the um, marijuana bill that we started. To- Another point of discussion was the marijuana bill under consideration in the state house. This current proposal would remove all civil and criminal penalties for adult possession of up to an ounce of marijuana rather than the full-blown legalization scenario in place in states like Colorado or Washington. All told, seven states and the District of Columbia, including Maine and Massachusetts, now allow for legal recreational use and possession of small amounts of marijuana. How drivers suspected of driving while impaired by the drug was one concern the Dorset residents wondered about. The bill has yet to be voted on by the House, and if it does, it will need to pass muster in the state Senate where earlier this week, several state Senate leaders indicated that it was probably unlikely to pass during this session. The discussion in Dorset covered the reaction of law enforcement officials and what the next steps might be. Currently, the bill is under consideration in the House Human Services Committee. Jim Salzgiver gave an update on the Taconic and Green merger and where Dorset stands in terms of Act 46, the state's school consolidation statute. Then it was on to some specific local questions. One resident was concerned about the state of the railroad tracks. Other concerns dealt with the need to improve the pedestrian crossing on Route 7 at the corner of Mad Tom Road, and the need for a better sign that let visitors know they had arrived in Dorset. Another wondered about rules on dilapidated empty barns that should be torn down if they were no longer in use. Another wondered if there was a mechanism to get some properties cleaned up. 
Afterwards, Representative Sullivan described the value of these meetings with small groups of constituents. No surprise, she said, the state budget is usually topic A during these conversations. The main purpose for me is exactly that, but also because I'm here to represent everybody in our district and also the state of Vermont and all of feel how everything works across the board for all constituents. So it's important for me to see what will flow down to our district, how my constituents feel, and of course there's going to be a divide. And so I try to weigh who's the majority, and then I will analyze the bills that are out there and then bring back the information. So I think it really is important that it's a team effort and that I can best analyze the bills that are going forward, not just from a legal analysis and a financial analysis, but also keeping subjectively my constituents' point of view. For the GNET TV News Project, I'm Andrew McKeever.